Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the digestion process which takes place under the action of the pancreatic enzymes and the bile. <clears throat> so first we will talk about, now here whatever we talk about they are all partially digested. So let us first talk about proteins. Now proteins are already partially digested so we do not have proteins in the form of proteins. We have it in the form of proteases or peptones. So this is what we have now. So what happens is these peptones or the proteases they are acted upon by the enzyme trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase. Carboxypeptidase. All these enzymes act on these partially digested <coughs> proteins and they form dipeptides. So which is again another simpler version of the proteins. So that is how proteins are digested. Next is the polysaccharides. Now some of the polysaccharides have already been converted into disaccharides in the mouth by the action of salivary amylase, but not all of them, only 30%. So the remaining 70% of polysaccharides will get converted into disaccharides by action of the enzyme amylase. So this will form disaccharides. Then comes the fats. Now the fats are like, they are like big globular structures. They have big globular structures. So somebody needs to break those big globular structures before their digestion can actually take place. So who does that? The emulsification of fat is done by bile. So now this emulsifies the fat. So it is converted into smaller structures which are known as mycelies. So now these smaller structures of fats are then acted upon by enzymes called lipases and diglycerides are formed. So if you see these are all quite simple when compared to the initial complex structures. And the last one would be the nucleic acids. The nucleic acids are also acted upon by enzyme called nucleases and they convert it into nucleotides which further gets converted into nucleosides by the action of the enzymes nucleases. Right? Now similarly here diglycerides also get converted into monoglycerides further by on action of lipases. Right? So what is happening here? So in this step, as a result of the pancreatic enzymes which became active now by the action of enterokinase and also by action of bile, all the proteins, polysaccharides, fats as well as nucleic acids, everything gets converted to a simpler form. However, these are not the simplest form. So right now the action of, this is only by action of pancreatic enzymes and bile. So what do you get as a result of this? You get these as the results. So now in the next step we will see what happens when on top of these the intestinal enzymes also act. The intestinal enzyme means the enzymes which are secreted by the uh, <coughs> cells present in the mucosal layer of intestine like the brush border cells. So above steps happen by pancreatic enzyme, the products are further broken down by intestinal enzymes and when they are broken down by intestinal enzymes, they, the most simplest absorbable forms are formed and that is when we say that complete digestion has taken place. So now please remember the products of the action of pancreatic enzymes. So now we will start our discussion with these products. So now we will talk about the action of the intestinal enzymes which causes the complete digestion. So now we are left with dipeptides. We are also left with some disaccharides. We are also left with nucleosides. And we are left with monoglycerides because these were the products of after the action of pancreatic enzymes. Now what happens to this dipeptides? 
Now these dipeptides are then acted upon by an enzyme called dipeptidase. So this is an intestinal enzyme which is secreted by the cells in the innermost layer of the small intestine. So dipeptidase peptides gets converted into amino acids and we all know that amino acids are the basic building block of proteins. So that this is how protein gets converted into its simplest absorbable form. Similarly disaccharides get converted into monosaccharides by action of different enzymes. Now let us look at the disaccharides which get converted into monosaccharides. Now examples of disaccharides would be lactose, sucrose, maltose. So these are all disaccharides and all of them get converted into the corresponding monosaccharides. For example, lactose gets converted into glucose and galactose. Now this conversion happens in presence of an enzyme called lactase. Similarly, sucrose gets converted into glucose and fructose in presence of an enzyme called sucrase. In a very similar way, maltose gets converted into glucose and glucose in presence of an enzyme called maltase. So all these enzymes are also intestinal enzymes. So this is how disaccharides get converted into the monosaccharides. So monosaccharides again are the simplest absorbable form of carbohydrates. Now is the turn for the nucleosides. Now what were nucleosides? Nucleosides contain sugar and bases. Now these nucleosides in presence of enzyme gets converted into the corresponding sugars and the bases which are again the simplest absorbable form. And the last one that is monoglycerides gets converted in presence of an enzyme called lipases into fatty acids and glycerol. So if you see multiple steps of digestion takes place in the small intestine by action of so many enzymes. Now so much of digestion is possible in small intestine also because there are too many enzymes present in the small, small intestine. The enzymes from pancreas are also gathered in the small intestine. Intestine itself secretes so many enzymes. The bile from the liver also comes to the intestine and moreover the food which comes to the intestine is already partially digested. So because of all these reasons we say that complete digestion takes place in the small intestine. So now when all these steps are over that is when we are left with so we started our journey with some food. Let us suppose we started our journey with a burger which contained carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now at the end of this step we are left with monosaccharides, amino acids, fatty acids and glycerol. So we say that complete digestion has occurred or we can say that digestion is completed. So this complete digestion takes place in the duodenum of the small intestine. So now the process of digestion is quite clear to us that how the process takes place. It is basically by the action of enzymes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.